Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a horror drama film, Possession. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a man named Mark returning to his wife and son in West Berlin after a long assignment. He is overjoyed to see his son and even amusedly watches as he plays in the bathtub. However, he and his wife Anna are not in a good place. He admits that he hasn't been faithful to her while on assignment. Anna asserts that she didn't cheat on him while he was away, but she does feel that their marriage has changed. They don't even want each other as husband and wife anymore. The following day, he meets with his bosses for a debriefing. They are very happy with his performance while on assignment. They had hired him as a spy on a covert mission in East Berlin. However, Mark no longer wants to work for them because the job is driving him away from his family, and he wants to try harder to repair what is broken. He goes home with a suitcase filled with money. However, the apartment is empty, and Anna and their son are no longer there. Mark falls asleep on the floor until the sound of the telephone ringing wakes him up. It's Anna telling him that she's downtown and would like some time to think about whether or not their marriage is worth saving. Mark rifles through his wife's things and finds some postcards and letters hidden inside a book. They're all from another man who wrote romantic sentiments to Anna. To confirm his suspicions, he calls Anna's only friend and asks her to admit if Anna is having an affair. The friend confirms that there's been a long-term affair going on. The phone rings again, and Anna tells Mark that she wants a divorce. She admits that he's having an affair with a male lover. Mark does not intend to fight for her, but he is angry that his wife has been duplicitous. He sets an appointment with Anna in a nearby cafe to settle the terms of their divorce. When Anna arrives, Mark tells her that he will provide a monthly allotment for their son, but he doesn't want to see him again. Anna is shocked by Mark's callousness, and they end up arguing about her affair. Mark makes a scene at the cafe by throwing plates and glasses around. Without hormones available, Mark drowns his sorrows with alcohol for a whole week and starts hallucinating from the effects of the alcohol. He recovers in his hotel room and sweats out the withdrawal symptoms. Once he is all right again, he goes to their apartment and finds his young son alone in the dirty apartment. He has been by himself for days after Anna left. The son also shows him the toy boat that Anna's lover had gifted him some months ago. Hours later, Anna arrives, looking all flustered. She reasons to Mark that she doesn't usually leave their son alone for that long. Mark puts his foot down and tells Anna that he will be taking care of their son instead because she is obviously unwell. If she doesn't break things off with her lover, he will throw her out of the apartment. Despite his harsh words, Mark is still fond of Anna and has a soft spot for her. He wants to understand why she's behaving erratically. That night, Mark takes care of her and tucks her into bed. But sometime after, Mark is woken up by the telephone ringing. It's Anna's lover, telling him that Anna is in his apartment, and he will be the one to take care of her. Mark is crushed when he sees a letter written by Anna, telling him that she's going to go to her friend's house. He realizes she was lying, and she went back to her lover. Still, Mark tries to reach out to her. He gets the lover's number from the friend, but when he phones him, his mother picks up. The mother informs Mark that Anna hasn't been to the lover's apartment in weeks. Mark takes his son to school and is shocked to see that his teacher bears an uncanny resemblance to Anna. However, she has light brown hair and green eyes, as opposed to Anna's darker hair and blue eyes. Mark decides to visit the lover's apartment next to retrieve his wife. However, it's only the lover there. The lover is a very philosophical and free-loving person. He comments that he has changed Anna for the better and caused her to be more open to who she really is. Of course, Mark cannot accept that this Anna is the real Anna. He attempts to beat up the lover, but the lover knows martial arts and he ends up beating Mark instead. When he gets home, he discovers Anna laughing with their son. She appears to be back to her old self. He asks her where she was, and she says that she was with her friend, but is obviously lying. Mark's frustrations cause him to slap Anna multiple times as she screams at him. She flees from the apartment, and he runs after her. Blood is running out of her mouth, and Mark threatens to follow her. A truck swerves to miss Anna, who has walked into the middle of the road. The friend arrives and flirts with Mark. She removes his sweater and starts unbuttoning his shirt. It is implied that they have had intimate relations before. Mark hires a detective to monitor Anna's movements. He then returns home to tuck his son into bed. Meanwhile, a half-naked friend waits inside Mark's bedroom. The next morning, Anna arrives at the apartment and starts doing chores. Mark is frustrated and tries to ask her again about what her problem is. Suddenly, Anna takes an electric knife and almost slices her throat open with it. Mark yanks it away from her and applies first aid to her wound. He tells her that she is his family and he's not letting her go. A while later, he slices his own arm with the knife. Anna says goodbye for a mysterious reason. Before leaving, she looks at her injury and tells him that the wound doesn't hurt. He agrees. The detective follows Anna around the city while she goes on errands. 
He stalks her in the grocery and traces her smell like a dog to the train station. A strange man plucks a banana from her grocery bag, and Anna doesn't say anything. The detective follows her to a rundown apartment building downtown. Anna races upstairs to her unit. The detective immediately informs Mark about Anna's location. He then rings the doorbell to her apartment. When she doesn't answer, he comes in of his own accord. Anna is in the foyer, looking scared. He pretends to be a property manager inspecting the apartment. He walks around the shabby apartment, flinging open the curtains to let the light in. Anna maniacally offers him a glass of wine. The detective nervously declines. She deliberately breaks the wine bottle. The detective walks into one of the bedrooms and discovers a strange tentacled creature dwelling inside the room. However, Anna sneaks up behind him and kills the detective with the broken wine bottle. Meanwhile, the teacher visits the apartment and asks to talk to Mark about the sun. However, the doorbell rings again, and it's Anna's lover, looking for Anna. This time, Mark has the upper hand over him. He taunts the lover with the fact that he knows where Anna is. Mark comes back inside and finds the teacher telling his son a bedtime story. Afterward, she tells Mark a hormone time story, and they sleep together. The next morning, the investigative agency owner informs Mark that the detective assigned to Anna's case disappeared last night. He asks Mark for the address of Anna's apartment. If he doesn't find the detective, he will have to notify the police soon. Mark gives him the address. The agency owner heads to the apartment and finds Anna mopping the floor. He shows her a picture of the detective and questions Anna about his whereabouts. She leads him to the same bedroom, where he finds the remains of the detective near the tentacled creature. In shock, he pulls out his gun and fires it. In retaliation, Anna beats him with her rag and steals his gun. She then kills the agency owner by shooting him with his hormone gun. On the other side, Mark finds a package containing a videotape taken by the lover. The tape features Anna monologuing about good and evil. Anna appears at the apartment again and starts ransacking the cupboard. Mark tells her to sit down so they can have a proper conversation. Anna confesses that she had a miscarriage while he was gone on assignment. In a flashback, it was revealed that Anna had a mysterious episode while on the subway. She had gone seemingly crazy and berserk, screaming and crying inside the station. Then blood poured out of every orifice, and she realized that the baby she was carrying is dead. Mark tells Anna's lover the address of Anna's apartment, so the lover heads there to seduce Anna, who is dazed and twitchy. He shows her the packet of exotic pills from India that he plans to use on her. He hopes to get some hormone treatment from Anna. In turn, she shows him the bedroom where she's keeping the tentacled creature, as well as the refrigerator where she's keeping the dismembered body parts of her victims. The lover is in shock, and Anna stabs him with a knife. Since he gets treated by her knife instead of her hormones, the lover flees the apartment with his injured ass. Anna says nothing as her lover leaves. She goes back to the bedroom and removes her clothes in front of the tentacled creature. The lover calls Mark in a panic. Mark tells him to wait for him in a bar. Meanwhile, the friend arrives with groceries in hand. Mark heads to the apartment, but Anna and the creature are not there anymore. He sees the dismembered body parts, and his eyes widen in shock. He begins to twitch uncontrollably. Mark screams and flings open a window so he can breathe. When he calms down, he grabs the detective's gun from inside the refrigerator. He then goes to the bar, where the injured lover is waiting. He wants to do something about Anna's mental illness. However, Mark doesn't want to curb Anna's madness. Inside the bar restroom, he whacks Anna's lover in the head with a ceramic toilet seat cover. He then stages the scene to look as if the lover died of a drug overdose. He places the lover's head inside the toilet bowl and slumps his body over the toilet. Mark then heads back to the apartment and sets it on fire to continue the erasure of all evidence that could lead the police to Anna. When he gets home to his apartment, he's stunned by the sight of the friend choking on her own blood because Anna seriously wounded her. He grabs her and sets her unconscious body on his bed. Anna is already inside as well. She gives the shocked Mark a bath. The couple has now reached a new understanding, and they sleep together on the bathroom floor. Afterward, Mark makes plans to run away together. He and Anna had erased all evidence connecting them to their crimes, but Mark wants a fresh start. However, Anna is only concerned about keeping the creature with her. She killed all those people because she believed they wanted to take the creature from her. The mysterious creature has effectively taken root in her mind, body, and soul, and she sees it as a deity of sorts that she's bound to worship. The lover's mother calls Mark and informs him that Anna's apartment has been blown to smithereens, and her son's body was found in the bar. Later that night, Mark leaves his son under the care of the teacher. When he returns home, he finds Anna in bed, copulating with the tentacled monster. Mark is terrified by this sight, so he leaves the apartment and heads to the house of the lover's mother. She has quietly accepted that her son is gone, but she doesn't want to live in a world where he is dead, so the old woman ingests poison and dies in front of Mark. 
The next day, Mark's former employer tries to persuade him to go back to his old job. However, he refuses. Mark goes to the friend's apartment, but the police are already there waiting for him. A shootout ensues, and Mark is injured by the police. He escapes into a building and climbs up a stairwell. Anna appears and approaches Mark upstairs. Behind her is the creature, who has transformed into a perfect doppelganger of Mark, but with green eyes. It's implied that the creature transformed into Mark because that is the version she wanted Mark to be. Mark is about to shoot the creature when the police arrive and shoot the couple multiple times. Anna crawls to her husband and dies in his arms. Meanwhile, the creature appears unharmed. It escapes the building as Mark jumps to his death from the top stairwell. The Anna look-like teacher ends up taking care of the son. One day, the creature, who still looks like Mark, knocks on her door. The son senses that the creature will bring evil and asks the teacher not to open the door. Although the creature looks like his father and the teacher looks like his mother, the son knows that every version of his parents is destined for tragedy. To escape this hellish version of his family, the son drowns himself in the bathtub. The teacher stares with her brilliant green eyes as the creature's silhouette is seen through the frosted glass door. This indicates the teacher is also one of the mysterious creatures that control and mimic their human targets before blending into the original human family and replacing their lives. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.